Tonight we're talking about developing a valuable lifestyle. So developing a valuable lifestyle in the kingdom. So because we're in Hanukkah, I felt the Lord pressed on my heart about we're in a season of light. So Matthew 5, 14 says, Jesus said, you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. So think about that. You are like a city that is on a hill that cannot be hidden. It's for all to see. You know, a few weeks ago, we were talking about Baal worship, and we talked about how Gideon went out and he tore down the altars of Baal and the Ashtoreth poles because whenever they did worship Baal, it was on the highest point in the city, which we call the high places in the Bible. And they would go there and they would do all these exploits and these horrible things and these perverse things to, to worshiping Baal, that, that God. But it was on the highest point in the city. But so Jesus says, you are like a city on a hill. You're the light. He didn't say you are a light. He said, you are the light of the world and that you are like a city on a hill for everyone to see that can't be hidden. So don't hide your light. Everybody say, don't hide your light. Jesus goes on to say in verse 15, people don't light a lamp and put it under a basket. Instead, they set it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. See, we're not just, we're not just lamp stands, but we're lighthouses. Somebody say lighthouse. lighthouse. You know, one of the, one of the um, mandates on our church that God asked us to pick up is being a lighthouse in this community. And many years ago, when God, God used to speak that to me at the church I was at, when he gave the prophetic word about the mandate on that church, I thought a lighthouse was just, you know, a lighthouse. But it's more than that. It's more than that. It means that a lighthouse is like an apostolic center where people are drawn to you. It is a place for training and equipping and so that you can go out as a light into the world. It's just not coming in and, and going out and, and continuing to go about your life and walking this way and walking that way and being stumbled this way and stumbling that way. So the mandate for a lighthouse is so that God can invest into you for his kingdom purpose. It's not a matter of whether or not that you're doing everything everything right all the time. It's a matter of whether or not you say yes to the Lord so that your light can shine. See, we think sometimes because we trip up or we stumble that our light is being put out. That's not the truth. That's why we repent. We get up, we stand up, we dust ourselves off, and we keep going. Jesus said, if they don't receive you, shake the dust off your feet and keep going. He didn't say go and lament and wail and cry in, in the corner over there. No, he said, stand up, get up, and go forward. Are you here? All right. Ephesians 5.13 says, everything exposed by the light becomes visible. Now listen to that. Think about that. Everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that is illuminated becomes a light itself. Everything that becomes illuminated becomes a light itself. Everything that is illuminated becomes a light itself. So listen, when the light of God shines on your life or on somebody else's life, you're either going to do one or two things. Either you are going to move over into the kingdom of God, or you are going to run from the light and stay hidden in the darkness. But the problem is, is that the light of Jesus, when it shines, or the light of the kingdom, exposes everything. There's no place to hide. It's, the Bible says there's nowhere you can hide, that its eyes see everything. So it doesn't matter how much you try to run him. David said, Lord, it doesn't matter where I go, that you're there. If I go to the depths of Sheol, you're there with me. If I go to the deepest oceans, you're there. The highest heights, you're there. God is everywhere. You can't hide from God. So listen, when God calls you, understand that when his light shines on you, when his light is shining on a specific area in your life, understand that God maybe sometimes is saying, hey, you need to acknowledge that. You need to acknowledge that. But guess what? When God is shining his light on that, it says that whatever is illuminated becomes light. So if you are practicing something or doing something from your former ways or your former life, God, let me put it this way to you, God will take that and use it for his kingdom. God will take that the way God in his miraculous power will take that, he'll put you in the washing machine, wash you up, spin you around, put you in the dryer, and then kick you out, and then use those things that once used for darkness for his light. Amen. You'll, you'll, you'll agree with me eventually, I'm sure. Okay, so listen, in, in, in Revelation 22, now this is amazing, so look at it this way. In Revelation 22, it says that the, there is no sun, there is no moon, there are, there's nothing that illuminates anymore because God himself is our light. It says that God himself is our light. There's no more, there's no more reason why we needed a sun that, we, that God illuminates us, and it, he, God is our source of light. 
So think about that. God's light is your provision in, in your life. John 3.19 says, this is the verdict, the verdict, the judgment. So the verdict means, actually, it means it's, it's going to the root of the, it's going to the very root source of what is causing you to sin. It says, the light has come into the world, but men love darkness rather than the light because of their deeds were evil. John 9, 5 says, Jesus said, well, I am in the world. I am the light of the world. Now, Jesus isn't in the world anymore, but did the light leave? No, because Jesus is the light that shines in every heart of every believer. See, as long as we're still here, Jesus is still very present. We are the light. Jesus said the first thing I read to you in Matthew 5, 14, it says, you are the light of the world. He didn't say you are a light. You are the light. Are you all here tonight? 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says, The God of this age blinded the minds, that is the mental perception of unbelievers. He blinded the mental perception, the understanding. He blinded their understanding of unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. Imagine that. So thinking or thought or perception has to do with sight. The way you perceive things, the way that you look at things. It says, as a man believes in his heart, so he is. A way that you see yourself, the way that you see things gives you sight. The way that you perceive them is sight. In Greek, the word for light is phos. It is used to indicate knowledge of the truth and spiritual purity, as well as revelation and illumination. 2 Corinthians 4, 6 says, For God, who said, Light shall shine out of darkness, is the one who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. Say that with me. The light of the knowledge of the glory of God. Say it again. The light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. So who is the light? What is light? John 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came through into being through him, and apart from him, not even one thing came into being that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of mankind, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not grasp it. So, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God and was God. Yes? In the beginning, it says in Genesis 1, so in John 1, you have John describing Jesus in the beginning. In Genesis 1, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth became void without form, but the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the deep, yes? And it says the first thing that God said is, he said, let there be light. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God and with God. And in the beginning, the Word said, let there be light, and there was light. John went on to say that Jesus is the light. It says, in him was life, and, the, and that life was the light of mankind. So when God said, let there be light, the life was released into all of creation. Are you following me? See, Adam and Eve walked in the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. Adam and Eve walked in the knowledge of the light of the glory of God. The word light in Hebrew is the word or. It also means order. God brings chaos into order. So in Genesis 1.1, when God said, let there be light, the first thing he did was releasing the light of the glory of the knowledge of God. So listen to me. God said, let there be light. So what was God saying? He's like, I'm going to release the, the understanding, the revelation, the truth of my glory into the world, which brings order. And what did we see after that? God said, let there be light. And then there was light. And then after that, you begin to see all of the recreation of the world. So light is present. Jesus is present. So without Jesus is the word, he's there in the beginning and in the in the hebrew it actually says in the beginning elohim it says elohim aleph tav in the in the hebrew which you don't see in english it's not translated but aleph tav is jesus it's the beginning and the end, alpha and omega. Aleph Tav in Hebrew is the same as alpha and omega. So what we don't see there that wasn't translated is that Jesus is very much present. The word was present. And what else was present is the light which produces creation. It's life itself. So everybody say light, light. Is, life. is life. See, darkness cannot comprehend the light, which is life, order, truth, knowledge, and the glory of God. Why? Because that is Jesus. Jesus is order, Jesus is truth, Je Jesus is knowledge, Jesus is glory. 
because it doesn't know the truth. John, uh, Jesus said in John 8 that the truth is not in you, speaking to the Pharisees. He goes, you don't understand the words. They don't even know what I'm talking about because the truth isn't in you. You don't know, you don't understand, perceive what I'm saying. See, remember, perception, blinding the mind. He said, you can't even hear me because you can't see who I am. If you, if you understood what I'm saying to you, you would understand who I am and where I come from. But because you're blinded or you can't see, you don't understand truth. Yeah? Yes. So darkness can't understand truth. Ephesians 5, 8, 9 says, for you were once darkness. Everybody say, I was once darkness, but now I'm light. But now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light consists of all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Aren't you glad that you moved out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of light? Aren't you glad that you can't produce? Listen, Jesus said that a good tree cannot produce bad fruit, right? Bitter does not produce sweet, and sweet can't do that, right? Right? So one can't produce the other. Listen, when, you're, when you walk out of dark, when you're called out of darkness into the light, you cannot continue to produce those things that once were in your life unless you allow it to because that's called walking in the spirit and walking in the flesh. You're either walking in the spirit or you're walking. Listen, you can't do both. You can't have one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom. You got to choose. You got to make a choice. Listen, Jesus made a choice. He died for you. Jesus made a choice. He said, I'm going to go and die so that I can redeem my creation. Jesus laid his life down. He gave up his life for you. So why don't, why then do we have one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom? You cannot be divided. A, a house divided cannot stand. A house divided can't stand. Therefore, present yourselves worthy. Philippians 1.27, nevertheless, Paul is talking to the Philippian church. This is called a, it's called a prison epistle because Paul was in prison when he wrote this. And he's, he's, he's telling them while he's in there, he's like, I think I'm going to get out. But nevertheless, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then, whether I come to see you or only hear about it in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in one spirit, contending side by side for the faith of the gospel without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. You know, there's people that oppose you. There's people that want to cause opposition. And sometimes it's not people in the world. Hmm. Yeah. Sometimes it's not the world that's causing opposition. Hmm. I can feel my Mr. T anointing coming on. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yes, yes, Lord, yes. For I say, some of you think that what you see is part of me. For I say that many are standing opposing me. For I say that some are standing like a wall for the things that I want to bring forth into the earth because they're afraid to let go of them. They're afraid because of the dynasty that they've built. For they are afraid because of the things that they've built up and by their own hands, by their own power, will come crumbling down. For I say, what is better, my anointing or the spirit of the world? For I say that the spirit of the world, which has come in, which has come in, which has come in and affected, infected, infected. Oh, for I say that you are eating from a tree. You are eating the fruit off of a tree that I have not planted. You are eating from a source that I am not providing from. Oh, the Lord says, I have planted a tree. I have planted a tree. I have planted a tree. I have given you provision and resource and resource and resource. So why turn to that other source? God is showing me right now that there's people in his own church, in his own kingdom that are being pocketed money to preach a certain way or to say a certain thing or act a certain way for taking money in their back pocket and God's slipping in there. I'm telling you right now that God is going to lower. He's lowering down a plumb line. He's lowering a plumb line down and is going to 
to cause the pastors, it's going to cause the leaders to have to make a choice. Which side are you going to be on? Because you can't walk in the power of my spirit and receive from the world. You cannot walk in the power of the kingdom and receive from the world. For I say you have to make a choice. It's either on one side or the other. For I am, I am, I am now in a position where I am calling out leaders. I am calling out leaders. I am calling out leaders. Then I am cleaning and I am cleansing my temple. For I say, I am cleaning and cleansing my temple. I am cleansing my temple. Because I choose to want to give to you the power. There is a source of power that I am releasing. And you cannot get it from any other source. Do not worry about what it costs. Don't worry about what it costs. Don't worry about what it costs. This is for some of you here as well. Don't worry about what it's going to cost. Don't worry about the cost. I got it. As long as you're doing what I have called you to do, as long as you're doing what I have commissioned you to do, I am going to provide the resources for you. I have you in the palm of my hand. I have you right where I want you. God says, don't worry about eating off the tree that fruit. Don't worry about eating the fruit of that tree. Only keep your eyes on me. Keep your focus on me. Keep your eyes on me. I just feel like we need to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, I repent right now. Lord, for those, Lord, for those in the kingdom, Lord, for your leaders, God, that have taken things that do not belong to them, Lord, that were bribed or commissioned to do things, Lord, that you have not called them to do. Lord, I thank you, God, for your spirit of God. And I thank you, Lord, for the spirit, for your, for your redemptive re uh, nature, God. Lord, and we repent, Lord. We stand in the gap right now for those Lord, have done things, Lord, that you have not agreed with or have called them to do. Lord, we ask for them to right now, Lord, lay their hearts out, Lord, that they would feel, feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit, God, and they would repent and move away from those things. Mm. Jesus, Jesus. So conduct means to how you live, how you present yourself, how you behave as a citizen to recognize the laws, how you conduct yourself. Smith Wigglesworth's quote says, part of his quote, it says, In an, it is an awful thing for me, Smith talking about himself, to see people who profess to be Christians live a lifeless, powerless life. And in a place where their lives are so parallel with unbelievers that it's difficult to tell which or what place they are in, the flesh or the spirit. So how do we walk? How do we present ourselves? We are representatives. You know, we are representatives. We are representatives of the kingdom. We're ambassadors. Ephesians 5.1 says, Be imitators of God in everything that you do, for then you will represent your Father as his beloved sons and daughters. 2 Corinthians 5.20, Therefore we are ambassadors for Christ. That means that you are, are an accredited diplomat and official representative. See, when you cross-reference the root word of conduct in Greek and into the Hebrew, one of the words is Ben. B-A-N-E, but we call it Ben, B-E-N. It means son. It means the one who continues the family line. Daughter is the word bat. It's B-A-T-H, not bath, but bat. It is the same letters except for adding one more. So it is the letters bet, nun, tav. So tav, which is the letter that is added to, so ben is bet and nun, that's how you get it. And tav is actually, it means marking. It's two cross sticks in the Paleo-Hebrew. It is the letter that they use for covenant. So daughter, if you translated it by those letters, would be... Sorry, I lost my spot. It means the, the one who continues the family covenant. So the, the male, the son, is the one who continues the family line, 
female or daughter is the one who continues the family covenant. See, it takes both men and women to continue the house. It takes both men and women to build the house of God. It takes both together. That's why God created man and woman, because it takes both coming back together to, to build and create his kingdom. Therefore, as sons and daughters, we are to conduct, live, and walk like God, like Jesus. We are to be the light called to continue what Jesus started. We are to carry, what it says that, all, in Acts it says that all that Jesus began to do and teach, Jesus began to do and teach. He didn't finish it. He said it is finished, paying the price. But it wasn't finished that it was over and it was, everything that he needed to do was done. So part of the calling of being a light in the world is to continue being that light. See, the phrase where it says, be worthy of the gospel, be worthy of the gospel. Worthy is in the sense of having a value or a weight, the value in its weight. In other words, when you measure gold, it's weight in gold. So in the military, they train with a rucksack. Looks like a backpack, but it's much different. It's built to carry weight and endure for a long period of time. See, there's a weight that we carry in the kingdom. There is a weight. Listen, we, we you know, I said this one time, and when I said this, it irritated every religious person that I knew. <laughs> and I said, I said that, you know, we're not worthy. We weren't worthy, but we're not worthless. And somebody got very upset with me. It was a retired pastor, and he, he's like, he gave me a, he wrote me an email that was like 10 miles long about, you know, there's nothing good in the flesh. And I was like, I wasn't talking about the flesh. I'm like, I'm like we're, not, we're not worthless. If we were worthless, why would God redeem us? He paid, he paid the highest price to redeem us. Redemption, restoration, bringing us back into the family line. So in the military, they train with weight. They put weight on, they train with it because they have to get used to carrying that weight. See, there's a weight. <laughs> there's a weight on our lives. There's an anointing on our lives. There is a weight that comes from Jesus, that comes from God. See, you can, you can, you can stomp on, this, on the enemy or you can crush him underneath your, underneath your feet because of the weight that you carry. You can either try and crush them on their feet by stomping, or you can carry the weight that God has put on your life that comes from knowing him. There is one kingdom that crushes all others. There's only one. Daniel deciphered the dream that one kingdom came down and crushed all of them. There's only one kingdom. There's only one kingdom that prevails. There's only one king that prevails. His name is Jesus. So what are we crushing? We're crushing darkness. See, you are sons and daughters of light. Therefore, walk and posture yourself in this manner, standing firm in one spirit, contending side by side for the faith of the gospel. Why don't you all stand up? I'm gonna pray this prayer over you that Paul prayed over the Ephesians church. Travis, you can come on up. So I'm going to pray this prayer, and then we're just going to worship for one more song. I pray that the Father of glory, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, would impart to you the riches of the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation to know him through your deepening intimacy with him. I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination, flooding with you with light until you experience the full revelation of the hope of his calling, that is, the wealth of God's glorious inheritance that he finds in us, his holy ones. I pray that you will continually experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power made available to you through faith. Lord, I thank you tonight. Lord, that you are our light. You are, Lord, that you illuminate us, that you illuminate the path before us. See, some of you, some of you, I shouldn't say some of you, all of you, walk, walk with the light of the gospel, creating a pathway for others. 
People are drawn to you or people are running from you. The Bible says that we're a fragrance of life or the fragrance of death. So, Lord, I thank you that there is a light that shines out of your people. And, Lord, I thank you in this season, Lord, that the true light of the world is shining. And, God, as we light our trees, Lord, as we light our candles, as we light up our homes, God, and our houses and our businesses, Lord, we thank you, God, that you are the true light of the world that shines in every believer, in every house, in every home, and that we are like a city that is set on a hill for all to see. Amen.